Today we're going to be talking about language. We're going to be talking about language in Thailand, and we're going to be talking about languages in Thailand. We, 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 we're at another time going to be doing quite a lot of thinking about the role that language plays in forming our wider ethnic identity. And um, this is something that I'm particularly interested in. I think it's a fascinating uh, thing for social scientists to be studying. Often we uh, talk about um, ethnic dynamics and ethnic problems, ethnic conflicts. But I think sometimes it's important for us to be speaking more specifically about ethno-linguistic identities, ethno-linguistic dynamics, and ethno-linguistic uh, conflicts, because particularly, I would argue, in Thailand, for most ethnic minorities, who are full citizens of Thailand, so we're not going to be confusing citizenship with ethnicity, but for most uh, Thai citizens who identify as, as non-Thai ethnically, they may, uh, they may be Mon, they may be Khmer, they may have a background, they may have a Chinese background, they may have a Malay background, a Muslim background, they may have a, a Portuguese um, influence um, from the time when Portu the Portuguese were in Thailand for many, many centuries training. We're going to be talking about Thailand's linguistic diversity, and this presentation dovetails in with my um, series of talks on Chinese, on Siamese, not Chinese, on Siamese cosmopolitanism, where we uh, we ask the question about you know what do maps, what does cartography, how do uh, census and uh, demography, how do uh, the works produced by people analysing art, uh, art made, uh, written, drawn on the walls of temples. How does the work of social historians, we don't claim to be anthropologists or sociologists, what can anthropologists and sociologists learn from social historians who share their interest in ethnic dynamics, ethnic diversity. And so, but in this lecture, we're going to be looking specifically uh, at Thailand's linguistic diversity. And in past lectures, some of you may have been surprised to have seen the uh, makeup of Thailand's ethnic diversity in the past and the way in which these ethnic identities could be, um, were provided to you as an options. When you did a census, you were asked the question, were you this, would you identify as this or that? And this, as you know, is something that hasn't continued at certain times, at certain census, hadn't continued. But in the past, uh, the ethnic diversity of the country was so large that People in Bangkok who hired the British advisors to do the census really wanted to know how many of our subjects, of our citizens, are from uh, non-Thai backgrounds. But today we're going to be talking about language. And in a place like Thailand where there have been so many changes, over the last one or two hundred years. Economically, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of governance, in terms of materiality, the things that we use in our life, the way that we dress, the way we communicate. Uh, there are things about um, uh, our present which we find it hard to learn from, from the past, the source of data are difficult. Where do we go to to find really clear data on 
what things used to be like. And what I really like about looking at linguistic diversity, first of all, um, we, we're going to uh, the full screen here. Um, first of all, uh, this is a one of a series of maps which, um, which locate um, ethnic groups in mainland uh, Southeast Asia. Now, the white bits, um, we can assume to be uh, bits where maybe uh, national, um, we're looking at the white uh, parts of Myanmar, maybe this is where the Pama majority is, the white parts of Thailand uh, are parts where we have uh, Thai speaking, um, Thai languages spoken up around China is where Mandarin is spoken. But this is a, a map of ethnic groups in mainland Southeast Asia. Now, I, I need to say something that a, a, a characteristic of many ethnic minorities is that they are multilingual, and this map cannot um, show us where uh, multilingual uh, communities exist. In the far south, we have green for Malay. The purple is for the Khmer. You will see a light blue um, for Mon in Western, uh, in Western um, Thailand. And the brown on the northwest are Karen-speaking groups, most of whom are located in, uh, in Myanmar. So um, let's, let's, let's look at this. Um, let's, let's juxtapose, let's, let's just compare two maps together. And uh, the right-hand map, obviously, is the map of, uh, of Thailand, and we see uh, clear borders on the right-hand map. But on the left-hand map, uh, we can see the way in which certain ethnic groups uh, spill over into Thailand's neighbours. We can't see south of Thailand in this map, but um, northern uh, Malaysia have some of the largest concentrations of ethnic Malays in Malaysia. Uh, again, we see where Mon and Karen and Khmer-speaking groups, they cross over uh, west, south, and north into neighbouring countries, the neighbouring countries of Myanmar, of Cambodia, of Vietnam, and of China, and of Laos, sorry. So, uh, let's. Uh, these these are a summary of the of the languages spoken in the late nineteenth century. These are a summary of um, of of ling linguistic minorities that existed in Thailand um, at around, um, yes, at the end of the 1800s. And as you know, this was a time where there was extensive uh, modernization. Um, and what I want to point out, what I want to draw your attention to is the large, um, is the enormous size of the Lao-speaking um, uh, group in, in what we now call as Isan, uh, next to those uh, were, again, a significant Khmer-speaking community. I've got a, an interest in Muslim minorities in Thailand, and specifically Malay minorities. And as we all know from previous lectures where we interacted with Grabowski's analysis of the 1904 census that ethnic Malays um, uh, existed way, way up the peninsula, and the Konsi Tamarat in Ranong uh, being uh, some of them. 
These are some of the uh, languages spoken in Thailand. And it's important to mention here that, um, that uh, we have language groups and the, and the, and the Thai is, is by far the largest, uh, the largest uh, language group. But in addition to a, a subset of, of Thai, are a range of dialects. The standard dialect speak, spoken in central Thailand, which is taught throughout the country. Um, and we also, is, uh, Lao is a, is a part of the Thai family, but 22% uh, of um, Twenty-two percent of the present population of Thailand uh, speak this particular dialect. In the north, uh, a smaller number are counted, about nine percent, and in Pak Thai, southern Thai, uh, around eight percent. There are other Thai groups, uh, mostly in the uh, northeast. In the north, um, it, it is important to note that. Um, Southern Thai, that have, uh, having lived in South Thailand, it is quite possible if you only speak Central Thai, if you went into a village in Southern Thailand, you would not be able to stand, understand absolutely everything that was being said. And if a Southerner went to the North, the Southerner would have the same problems in the North. And so although, although um, everyone who has a state education and Primary, primary education in Thailand is compulsory. Uh, they are taught the central dialect. Uh, the vast majority of people in the northeast, the north, and in the south, in addition to speaking central Thailand, will also speak their regional dialect. And this has a very important, and I would argue the most important part in sub-national identities. We have noted earlier that a range of Chinese dialects are spoken in, in, uh, in Thailand and we have them um, enumerated there. We have numbers. Uh, there are other smaller language groups and uh, the, the Northern Khmer uh, are a, a large linguistic minority in Thailand. They are at least one million people, one million Northern Khmer speakers in Thailand. The other dynamic that I want to point out is the significant uh, size of the Malay-speaking uh, minority, and they are estimated to be around 2%. And so, Thailand... Um, although everyone in Thailand, m most, the vast majority of people, particularly um, under the age of 40 in Thailand, have had primary education in Central Thai and are able to communicate in Central Thai. In addition to that, um, the, there are large numbers uh, of of people in Thailand who, in addition to speaking Central Thai, also speak Thai dialects, the most important of which are the, the Lao um, of, of Isan, uh, the Kamuang of the north, and of the Pak Thai, uh, the southern dialect, Pasar Thai in South Thailand. So um, this is a summary of that information. Uh, the information just before was on present day, and here are some estimations about um, the situation which, which existed in the late 19th century. And what is important, important to point out is the relative size of the Lao and Kamuan uh, languages spoken, that they would have been approximately half of the population of Siam as it was um, at the turn of the 19th century. And so um, this explains, this is one of the reasons 
why governments, Thai governments, Siamese governments from the early 20th century were so emphatic about promoting the central dialect because so many of its subjects, and I would use the subjects, not citizens, um, so many of their subjects were non-central Thai speaking. They were only approximately 15% concentrated in Bangkok, but also in a UTR. In addition to other languages being spoken, uh, languages other than central Thai, there were a number of different writing systems also used. And here, are, here is a summary of uh, the orthographic systems that were used and uh, the languages that adopted the system and where these were located. Um, so in addition to the in, in addition to the Thai languages, there were uh, Khmer has its own script. Of course, Chinese has its own script, and Jawi is written in a modified uh, Arabic script, underscoring the point that Thailand at this time was a linguistically diverse. Um, part of mainland Southeast Asia where a range of languages were spoken and a range of writing systems were present and we are going to now make a few concluding comments about this fascinating window into ethnic diversity in Thailand by paying attention to language. Thanks very much.